Onivia, League of Legends highlights. The ability to stop a Lisa in his track, stop a a Kali from getting on top of you. But it'll be the Lulu instead. All right, that you, one you, second you doesn't jinxed scare it. Carrier. <laughs> <laughs> you jinxed it, and now we get that strong jinx. Dread wrapping around here. Ona is going to be discovered. There's the destiny as BDD does find the gold card onto Carrier. No flash, remember, as there's the flash in. Dread is going to pick up the kill, but they trade back immediately. Level five only, still for the Lee Sin. Gumyushi gets underneath the turret. It's a one for one in the end. First Blood went over to T1, and I think they're trading up once more. Yeah, especially because they too much more as Dread doesn't find himself this one, but Zayus going to face check. And Destiny there's the gate. Destiny. This is what we want. Some proactive play from Nongshim. There's the kick. Perfect execution comes through as well, and that gets Kana out of range as Super Mega Death Rocket will do a little bit of work there. A little bit too thin. I think they've missed out. Well, They're going for it. It's going to get in there, and he just heads he on forward, it. and he steals it away. There's the ult to come through from Peter as well as Ona, just barely out of the way of the final chapter. The curtain call, I believe, A came. lot of respect. Teleporter going to be utilized here as Kana makes his way over. And there is the destiny now, as it is going to be secured by Dread, and now Kana getting into the back line. This is a lot of damage. Final chapter doing a lot of work as Faker is taken down immediately. The gravity field did a fair bit of work, but Carrier is left on his own. BDD tries to flash his way out. Azaeus down to half health, now diving back in. The needlework doesn't quite work, though, as that is a double kill for Kana. Dread looking for owner as well, and he should get it. It's going to be Yushi just getting ignored, and the rest of te his team is torn apart. Kind of wanting a little bit more. Wanted to pick up that kill onto his ex-teammate as he finds the five-point strike, and I don't think you're safe underneath this turret, Gumiyushi, and he's absolutely not. The tank Akali gets the work done and surely will take down the outer turret. And this is Nongshim sitting on that comfortable, massive tempo lead that they've been... Uh, celebrates with a whole bunch of tabbing. I love it. As Dread gonna have to get out of here, T1, putting on some pressure. Dread going to land the Q, but it's picked up by Ona, so he has nowhere to go now. Kana turns up now as well. Ults right in and gets right out again. That was so clean. I mean, look at his items. He <laughs> excuse me, it was three before that. Yep, as Kana's going to find Zayus here, or has Zayus found Kana is the question. They're fighting over the wolves. The rest of T1 are going to turn up faster, though, as the Cataclysm comes on through. Kana's going to get taken down as Ghost. Not enough damage right now, as BDD will trade it for this turret on the bottom side of the map. Kana finally punished, and that is a lot of shutdown gold going to T1. Yep. Looks like they're going to try to push as BDD onto that inner turret here, so it might be a trade of inners at the end of the day here, but T1 guarantee theirs, and they have enough time to back off. The problem here for T1 is you're actually giving Dread the opportunity to solo Hextech yeah. point here, which is, I think, what should be the bigger issue than this mid turret, but they just give it up. Yeah, the destiny does come through as Ghost now. Wanting to lock down Ona. Faker is going to get tagged, but not stunned, and that is going to be soul point, like you were talking about. T1 probably knowing they're trying to actually come back, but very slow. And then BDD just says, all right, well, I'm going to go to a side lane. Instead, you zoom forward into this. Do your damage, and that's what she wants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... The um, the macro play that they gain from this, though, uh, is pretty massive. This T1 are just sticking to the mid lane. And, uh-oh, Faker. Uh, Faker in trouble. There's the gold card. Everfrost there as well, and that is all too easy. This is how you play the Twisted Fate. As Zayas is teleported in, it's another gold card, and it's free that for BDD. Not T1 the right are looking to try and trade this with the inner turret in the mid lane, but it's going to be a race. and. I dare say Nongshim are going to win. There, yeah, two versus five here is the race. Although Owner is here, it can help buy some time. This is definitely going to be a bigger win for Nongshim. And that teleport from Zayus, he comes through without full health. The call must have been, okay, we can turn this, we can turn this, but they absolutely could not. And as a result, that's an extra kill being fed over here. Look at the Lee Sin's kill score. Now 5-0 and 2 this game. Dread is 7 of the 10 kills. They get an inhibitor. Scene. Getting some autos onto this Baron as Dread in the area does have a cat with him as Prowling Projectile spots that there's no one waiting in the brush. Destiny is available. They haven't pulled the trigger just yet as Dread gets in, kicks out the jungler, but Ona gets back in. He flashes, picks up the Baron. No one takes the Baron from this man as Dread is trying to escape, has a big old shield, and now Kanna has finally got here. The jungler battle is going to be won by the man with the more friends, and now Kanna is trying to delete all of these Barons. Carrier not going to be so lucky. Two of them looking to try and escape, but the curtains have been called. Dread gets forward. Zayas dives over, and he is...
is immune! Thankfully manages to get the circle, but he's running in the wrong direction. Permanent inhibitor damage, but they've gained full control over the map. BDD, gold card at the ready. Good vision over that wall, as you can see from Nongshim. But still able to do some real damage to this inhibitor turret. Kana gets into his shroud. And that is the deadly flourish, but not going to go in onto Zeus. They are just pushing it hard right now. And with the slows coming through, it's so difficult for T1 to defend. Yeah. And now they're splitting it up. The Hextech Soul really working out here. And they've got double Rapid Fire Cannon. They can activate it so easily yeah. with this composition. That's why we were talking about it, right? Like, feels like the Soul was kind of built for Nongshim's giveaway Soul, win Elder Fight, win game. Certainly has been done in the past, but not with a completely destroyed base. Gumushi almost dead here as Dread trying to get into that back line. The curtains have been called in T1. They have to respect it. The final chapter comes down as well. This Yumi keeping them all in position while their inhibitor is taken once again. Super Mega Death Rocket to do some damage onto Kana, but he's not too worried about it as now Ghost has been engaged on all the way here. Yeah, they're going to use the Hextech gate. Yeah, Teleporter is going to come down as T1 know that they want to turn this one. Dread tries to get into the back line. There's the final chapter, and it's a great gold card that lands. The Jinx already taken down as now Faker's in trouble as well. Chaos Storm trying to get that zoning in, but Kana finally turns up, and the Victor cannot do anything. The backflips are coming through. All of the five-point strikes, and you can tell this is so cathartic for the former T1 player as Nongshim are now flashing in the jungle and they will pick up the win in game two. Incredible execution of this comp. It feels like we've talked a lot about how tempo-based comps need to get ahead. They need to get those advantages, but it so very rarely happens in this scaling meta, especially in a slow region like the LCK. But Gnome Shimmer, the first team to pull it off with flying colors, make that first pick, Twisted Fate, work swimmingly here. Oh yeah. And it was off of two Hextech Gate teleports. They won those <laughs> major fights. So well played, the gold card in the back line, the follow-up damage from the Akali, the setup there with the Jin.